Hey everyone, welcome to Sheet Devils United. Happy Thursday, folks. Hope everyone is having a good day. Merry Christmas. We're nearly there. We're on the countdown the last few days. Guys, hope you're all sorted and everyone has a lovely, lovely Christmas. We've got some Man United stories doing the rounds today. Of course, it's never a dull moment. It's never a quiet day for Manchester United. We've got Man United being linked with some of the stars of the World Cup. We've got um, Amrat, who is Morocco's standout player and probably the best midfielder at the World Cup. We've got Alexis McAllister, who probably fits right in below him. Brighton's um, Alexis McAllister, who was sublime for Argentina. Of course, Enzo Fernandez was as well, so he wasn't um, probably... Fernandez was the, was the better uh, of the two, but McAllister right up there. We are being linked with him as well today. Josip Juranovic, Flahovic stuff, Bruno stuff, Carabao Cup stuff, guys. So let's get into it. But before I do, please smash a like on the video and please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Now, this story is coming from a Croatian outlet. I should have checked with Dora first to see how credible they are, but they are called, I'm looking at my notes just so I can get it right, Sportske. Novosti, Sportske Novosti. Now they are a Croatian publication and they are saying Manchester United have entered the race for Moroccan sensation. Ambrat, who is 26 and is playing at Fiorentina, central defensive midfielder, all action, all guns blazing, high pressing, tackling machine guys. He was an absolute machine at the World Cup. No, Liverpool have been heavily, heavily interested in, in him. We've heard previous reports from multiple outlets that Jurgen Klopp has actually ha held extensive talks with the midfielders camps about a move in the summer. Um, Liverpool also going to lose a couple of midfielders in the summer. Some of their midfielders are aging as well, so they definitely need to improve their midfield. They have been linked with Jude Bellingham, but I think they could go potentially for two midfielders. And they have held talks with Ambrach. They've also um, been heavily linked in the press to him as well. No, the Croatian publication go on to say that Manchester United's approach for the player might derail Liverpool's intentions to sign him and we could have a battle between some of the Premier League clubs for the player. But guys, that's really kind of all they say. That's kind of the, the bones of the article. Man United eyeing a move for him. We are looking to contend with Liverpool to sign him. Liverpool probably further ahead um, in negotiations to sign him. He is at Fiorentina. Um, he's in his prime, guys. I, I'm never one to take players on the back of a good World Cup. So Liverpool are interested in him. I would. I'm fine with them taking him. I thought he was outstanding in this World Cup, but I'm sure maybe he was doing it at Fiorentina. I've never seen him um, play other than at the World Cup, so I don't know how he is for his club. However, um, I, I think Man United have our eyes on other targets, other midfield targets, Frankie de Jong, Jude Bellingham. I don't believe this story, but guys, get in the comments underneath this video. Let me know what you rate this rumour out of 10. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10, generous 2 out of 10, but I, I, I don't think there's anything in it. Also, would you like us to sign Amber at? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, we're going to move on to Dusan Flahovic, the Corriere della Sport Italian outlets. The Italian press aren't, they're not credible, guys. They're they are really not. They're very, very hit and miss. The majority of the time they're miss. But it has come through the MEN as well, the Manchester Evening News. And they're saying that Dusan Flahovic's agent has come out and not ruled out the player leaving this January. Now, he says it's unlikely that the player will move from in January, but it's not impossible. We know that Flahovic signed for Juve from, was a Fiorentina, for 100 million euros. So he went for big, big money. I think he's been, I mean, his form has been questionable. People are saying he doesn't sit the Juve system. And as well, Juve are struggling. They're currently third. They were eighth. But I think between third and eight is very, very tight in Serie A. Juve might not even qualify for the Champions League. I don't think really he's having a happy time at Juventus. There are a lot of allegations going around about Ju the Ju Juventus and the board as well about fixing transfers and stuff like that. This transfer of Flahovic might come under scrutiny. He might be looking to leave, especially if Juve face 
consequences for those rumours or if it's found to be true, they might face some sort of sanction. And we saw years ago how they were relegated to Syria B, um, you know, and, and, and they had to start from scratch there. So that could potentially be a reason why Flahovic could leave. This term, guys, he has seven goals in 15 games. It's not blistering. He didn't start in the Euros for Serbia, which I found a bit strange given that he cost 100 million and is playing at Juve and Mitrovic, I mean, signed for, I don't know how much, but cheap and is playing at Fulham. Now, Mitrovic is having a really good season at Fulham, but you think 100 million superstar linked with Man United at, is at Juve would be getting the nod. He didn't start. He was coming on as a substitute for Serbia. Seven goals in 15. I mean, it's a, it's a goal every second game, but it's, it's not really like blow your mind 100 million pounds now last season guys he had a very good season i think he got 29 goals six assists in 45 games very very good for your striker to get nearly 30 goals six assists on top of it is absolutely brilliant season for him so he's only 22 as well i think he has a really good development in him i think he could potentially be a really good player for man united Man United are, we know where everyone knows we're looking for a striker. I think we're looking potentially for two. Chelsea are looking for a striker. They've signed in Kunku. Do they want another one? Maybe Arsenal as well. We know some of the big clubs definitely need strikers and they want strikers. So we'll have a battle on our hands for him. And it's always very, very difficult to take players from the Italian league. Sometimes I think when they go there, they love the lifestyle. They love the weather. It's beautiful. And Italy is, a, is, a, is an amazing country to live in. So I, it's very hard to get them from there it, it's it's usually harder to get the Italian players out of the Italian league so that way we might have an avenue of getting Flahovic if Juve don't qualify for the Champions League and if we do we could potentially get him a lot of people love him always in our live chat I'm hearing Flahovic Flahovic in in the comment section so I know a lot of you guys would love him let me know in the comments underneath what you rate the rumour out of 10, would you like him? I'm going to say I rate the rumour out of 10, 5 out of 10 I'll give it, simply because I think we could go for him, but not in January. This is never going to happen in January. This is one for the summer, definitely. And I think Flahovic is potentially on our target list. Guys, I did want to touch on last night's game just quickly because obviously we won 2-0. We beat Burnley 2-0. We're into the quarterfinals. The draw is taking place tonight after the City-Liverpool game. Big, big game tonight in the Carabao Cup. The draw and guys, one of the teams, one of the big teams will be out of the competition. So potentially opens a window for Man United and the draw will take place tonight. And the potential teams that we could face are Charlton, Leicester, Nottingham Forest, Newcastle, Southampton, Wolves. So guys, then Man United and then one a City and Liverpool. You'd be looking at that draw thinking and looking at those teams. And I know man, you know, Newcastle are, are flying and you know Southampton, Wolves, Forest, their Premier League teams, they'll give us a game. You never know. I mean, fair play to Charlton, but they're going to play the winner of... Charlton Athletic will play the winner of City or Liverpool, so you'd imagine they'd go out. Hopefully, Charlton would, would beat one of them, but, you know, you'd be thinking it's a step too far. But that it, it looks like a very, very tasty competition for Man United. A potential that we could go, guys, and do something in this competition. We've been saying we haven't won a trophy for five years. It would be lovely for Ten Hag in his first season to get one. You know, it would be brilliant. Some of the players in this squad have never won anything or they haven't won anything for a couple of years. So I think we need a trophy. This competition has huge potential for Man United. Forest, Wolves, Newcastle. I know they're flying, but we played them earlier on in the season. It was nil all. We should have beaten them. Um, and they played la the other night, um, not last night, the night before. They won one nil. They were no great shakes. They, you know, so you could, they are beatable, Newcastle. Well, they're flying under Eddie Howe. They're definitely beatable. Um, obviously the one to be watch would be the winner from the City Liverpool game. I think that that team and Man United would definitely be the the. You would imagine if we don't play one another earlier on in the competition, like the quarters, like the semis, that could potentially be the final. What a mouth-watering final that would be in, you know, be the first final Man United would be in since the season before last in the Europa League. So 
this competition, I think, I know, looking at it, I can understand why Ten Hag played a strong team as he did last night because looking at the rest of the teams, this is definitely one I think the manager is eyeing the Carabao Cup as a potential window of a trophy and as well you win it earlier on in the season it could give you confidence to go on get top four do bits in the Europa League you never never know it could give you that confidence the one thing about this guys is Bruno Fernandes he got a late booking last night he was booked against Villa he is going to miss the, the, the quarterfinal so he will be out which will be a big blow to Man United because we don't really have anyone of even near Bruno's quality for that number 10 position unless we play Ericsson in there but we know Ten Hag he's very very reluctant to play Ericsson in the 10 he likes him in the 8 because I guess you're losing what Ericsson brings in the 8 position then if you move him further forward and then that leads us into having McTominay and Fred in in that 8 spot which just doesn't really you know, the, the, the drop off in quality there from Ericsson to McTominay or Fred is massive so it'll be interesting to see who uh, Ten Hag will pick in the 10 position in that one. It is a blow for Man United. I didn't realise um, during the game that he was out. I, I missed it, so I didn't comment on it in, in the match reaction. But I, I did want to bring it tonight because not many people in the live chat either were, were talking about it. So I'm not sure if many people realised. But Bruno did pick up a yellow card last night and will miss because it was the second one. So he is suspended for the quarter final. So guys, we'll wait and see tonight who we get... Next up, folks, is Alexis McAllister. Now, the story linking McAllister to Manchester United is coming from Fichakis, Fichakis, Spanish outlet. They're not credible, folks. But what I will say is I think a lot of these midfielders will definitely be linked to Man United over the next month, even into the summer, if their stock is still rising. And we know McAllister... A pretty good player for Brighton, probably one of their best players, but never really a wow player that you'd go, oh my God. But according to the is they're saying Man United have been tracking McAllister, Alexis McAllister, since last season. Not just the World Cup, but since last season. They have been tracking him. They have been eyeing him. They have been watching him with a view to potentially bid. Now, everyone and their mother is going to be in for this player. He was outstanding in the World Cup. Now, the report from Fichaka says Manchester United bid is imminent because they don't want to miss out on the player. They missed out on him the previous time when he went to Brighton and they don't want to risk losing out on him again. Now, they don't give evaluation. He signed for Brighton for like, I think it was less than 10 million. He went to Brighton for us. So I'm, Brighton never sell players cheap. They just don't. It's, it, you know, Cucurella, Ben White, a couple of other players, they get maximum, maximum dollar for. And I think Moises Casido and McAllister in that midfield is the reason why Brighton have been doing so well in the last couple of seasons. Certainly the last two seasons, even since Graham Potter has left, they've still been really, really good. And I was thinking they'd fall apart, but they haven't. And I think it's the real quality. The Brighton scouting system is absolutely insanely good as well um i think chelsea were trying to cherry pick some of their technical directors and sporting directors and scouts and stuff which is a shame because i would love man united to go there and get some of them no they're saying because McAllister's really good world cup folks loads of clubs are going to be interested in him and the clubs range from Juve, Tottenham, Arsenal, Inter Milan, Atletico Madrid, Man United. I mean those are some big big clubs and Tottenham thrown in there as well. 6.9 million pounds Brighton signed him for 7 million pounds. So when I said less than 10 million it wasn't even close to 10 million 6.9 pounds what a bargain they got for for McAllister no folks McAllister is only 23 so he's not even in his prime loads of development I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I probably would have went with Enzo Fernandez. That's just me personally. Um, I would prefer that type of player, but he does play in next to him. McAllister is more box to box player. Uh, sorry, um, Fernandez is more box to box player. McAllister sits in alongside him, but I think he's an excellent player. He could be potentially an option for Man United. He's probably going to cost upwards of 40 to 50 million. I think we probably should go elsewhere. I'm not sure I believe this story in uh, from Fichak is, but 
Brighton only signed him in January 2019 and he's not out of contract until um, June 2025. So he's got another couple of years left in his deal. They've got no pressure to sell. I, I wouldn't imagine they're going to sell him unless they get a mammoth fee. So, you know, I don't think Man United are going to be near um, Alexis McAllister. But let me know in the comments what you rate this transfer story out of 10. Again, guys, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. I don't believe it. I wouldn't be too opposed to it, but I, I can't see it happening. Folks, last story up is um, a link to Josip Juranovic, Croatia's um, right back, who was phenomenal at the World Cup. He was right up there with um, Liverkovic, Gavardial and Modric as their best players. He was sensational. His defensive stats, his offensive stats in this tournament were incredible. Now, we have been linked with him a couple of times. He is 27. He is um, playing with Celtic in the Scottish League, but we've seen what he can do at international level. He has been tearing it up as well with um Celtic and we have been linked to him previously now the story is coming again from that Croatian outlet there um Sportsgate Novosti but it was picked up by the Express the Daily Express and they are running with the story and they're saying Manchester United are interested in acquiring um Josip Juranovic as a potential back up to Dalo or um, a player who can fight it out with him of equal quality for that right back position. Now the article goes on to say Man United are going to face stiff, stiff competition for him. Torino are interested in him. Barcelona are interested in him. Atletico Madrid are interested in him. There'll be more clubs interested in him guys after the World Cup because he was so impressive there. His stock will have definitely risen. The fact that we've been linked to him a couple of times before, well before um, the World Cup, we were linked to him last summer, last January as well. We've been linked to him multiple times. I'm going to as well give this transfer rumor. I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. I think there's potential in this one. He wouldn't cost a lot of money either because he's, you know, he's at Celtic. I think you could get him for around 12 to 15 million pounds. Watch out for that one because I think there is more potential in that story today and that rumour than any of the other ones I talked about. But guys, let me know what you rate that rumour out of 10, what you rate the potential World Cup stars that we're going for. McAllister, um, uh, Amberat and Juranovic, three players that shone in the World Cup. Brightly, we are linked um, to today. Not sure there's much, much truth in them, but we we'll wait and see. But guys, I am going to leave it there. If you're watching, please like, please subscribe. I'll be back in the next couple of days, of course, because we'll have our Nottingham Forest preview. And of course, we'll be live straight after that Forest game as well on the 27th. But folks, have a lovely, lovely Christmas and I'll talk to you soon. Take care all. Bye.